Let me talk to you. NXT continues to forge a path all of its own. WWE superstars of tomorrow today, bridging the gap between gritty and glitz. This is as prevalent as ever with HBK at the helm. Many are taking notice. TV networks want in. WWE has announced a significant five-year TV deal for NXT. The CW has been undergoing a lot of changes this year with a goal of acquiring more sports-related content. Friday Night SmackDown has also secured a new rights deal. SmackDown premiered in 1999 on the UPN network until 2006, when UPN and the WB merged to create the CW, which SmackDown was also a part of from 06 till 08. But this marks NXT's debut with the long-standing broadcast television channel, a proving ground for the next generation. Nearly 90% of the competitors in last year's WrestleMania were developed under the NXT system. Shawn Michaels spoke with News Nation on NXT's future with the CW. So for the first time in more than 15 years, a sports entertainment titan is returning to the CW. World Wrestling Entertainment's NXT brand exclusively on the CW starting in October of 2024. For more, let's bring in WWE Senior Vice President of Talent Development Creative for NXT, the heart Break kid himself and unquestionably one of the greatest wrestlers of all time, Shawn Michaels. This is the CW's second go round with WWE after being the home of SmackDown for a few years during the 2000s. How exciting is it to make the network the first ever broadcast home for the NXT? That's a big deal. And it's, it's a huge deal. Coming to network television is just gigantic. And for people who aren't in the, in the television industry, that means the possibility of being in every home in America, which is just, uh, as you know, I said, just huge for us, incredibly exciting. Uh, make no mistake about it, the people that you're going to be seeing on CW uh, in October of 2024 are going to be people that are going to be uh, main eventing WrestleMania in the very near future. And look, when Hunter started this, uh, you know, 13 years ago, his vision was, again, that, you know, within the WWE, we could hone uh, and develop the, the future stars of the WWE. You know, his vision has worked, and uh, I'm obviously just honored to continue to keep that going. Yeah. Um, and it really is. Again, I guess what you'll see from NXT is that, you know, is excitement, uh, unparalleled innovation. And as I say, where the wrestling business and sports entertainment are going in the future, you're going to see it firsthand on NXT. Who are, you know, looking into your crystal ball, who are some of the folks you think could be the next Shawn Michaels or The Rock? Who's someone in NXT that's going to be the next big thing? Braun Breaker, Carmelo Hayes, uh, our two guys, Trick Williams, Tiffany Stratton. Um, uh, the Creed Brothers, Tony D'Angelo, we have had a number of people just in these last couple of years that have gone uh, from coming out of college to now being regular names in, in the WWE and names in the wrestling business as a whole. And so we are just, uh, this is only going to grow uh, coming to the CW Network. I hope everybody can understand just how excited we are about this. This is absolutely a huge deal for us. Um, and all these young men and women here and this old guy uh, running the <laughs> ship is uh, very excited about the future because it looks incredibly bright. Oh my gosh, not old at all. Hey, we can't wait to meet who these future household names are going to be. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon. And Congrats on all the success, Shawn Michaels. Cena bridged the PLE promo to the post-show event, where he clarified further that the retirement tour will be year-long, about 30 to 40 matches planned. One rumored matchup, Carmelo vs. Cena. A good match for Cena to shake off that ring rust, get back in ring shape, while spotlighting the star power of the up-and-coming Carmelo Hayes. Like 
and share and subscribe. Triple H and company are currently redesigning numerous elements of the WWE, from camera angles to stage setups to titles. Gradually, a wave of change has finally arrived. The undisputed tag team championships were split and changed hands at WrestleMania 40, where we saw a highly entertaining six-pack tag team ladder match. Austin Theory and Grayson Waller would capture the SmackDown Tag Team titles, which are now known as the WWE Tag Team Championship titles. And the Awesome Truth would become your new Raw Tag Team Champions, which those titles are now known as the World Tag Team titles. A week of reveals which showcase Triple H with each brand's respective general manager. Kicking off this new era, the world branding will now stay with all titles associated with Raw with the exception of the sacred IC title. So for example, World Heavyweight title, Women's World Championship, etc. All titles associated with SmackDown will carry the WWE branding, Undisputed WWE Champ, WWE Women's Champ, and the United States Championship will be associated with the brand. The new design of the World Tag titles are a play off the current World Heavyweight Women's World Champ titles. You know, that big gold plated look. The new WWE titles that will be associated with SmackDown, design-wise, are an ode to the throwback original WWE Tag Team Championship titles, which is more of that wide look rather than circular and sits just right. It's a nostalgic design that makes me think of legendary tag teams such as The Smoking Guns, Owen Hart and the British Bulldog, HBK and Diesel. What are your thoughts on the new designs and the overall changes happening within WWE? Fandom, business, money, career, legacy. CM Punk returns to WWE at Survivor Series 2023. A massive hometown welcome back engulfed the arena and was felt through the screen. It was at the very end of the men's war games match, which also featured a returning Randy Orton who was away from the company for 18 months. One of the current top veteran stars left in WWE. He had extra interactions with Jey Uso storyline wise and pulled off a highlight reel RKO starring JD McDonough. The good guys prevailed against Judgment Day and McIntyre, and as the show was about to sign off for the press conference, Cult of Personality hit to everyone's shock. CM Punk was featured with the crowd as the pay-per-view tape rolled, but the competitors were not featured after, at least not on WWE cam, which was simply focusing on Punk's return and the ovation. Later on, we did see an irate Seth Rollins react to Punk's return, a reminder that in this business, you never say never, especially within WWE. Triple H released a pic via Twitter X of Punk and himself not too much later, and Triple H stated via the press conference, A lot of time has gone subscribe. by, almost 10 years, right? And if you are the same person you were 10 years ago, 10 years later, you've messed up. Everybody grows, everybody changes, um, and I'm a different person, he's a different person, this is a different company, and we're all on the same even starting ground. So, what's next for CM Punk? That'll be interesting, won't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see that myself. I know whatever it is, it'll be talked about, it'll be exciting, um, and it'll be a thrill ride for the WWE Universe, no matter, no matter what it is. Um, and I'm thrilled, we're all thrilled um, to have him back here, and um, to have him back, you know, cliche to say, but have him back home in WWE, to where he belongs. Also featured at the press conference was Charlotte, Becky Lynch, and Cody Rhodes, who also commented on the return of Punk. If he can help with where we're going and what we're doing, absolutely. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. And I have a feeling that the CM Punk that potentially we're getting is hungry. And, and that's the best. That's the best when someone's hungry, when somebody wants something, when it's when it's real. And I'll, I'll give kudos and, and, and flowers to to Triple H and Nick Khan for, for 
getting that done. Um, you could ask all the boys and girls till they're blue in the face, hey, how do you feel? You know, you might get up, you might get down, you might have a wide range of emotions, but the first thing always is business. And um, again, we're doing record business. Feels like everybody wants to be here. More the merrier. If you can help, absolutely come on board. And don't forget about another huge return that took place. And that's the return of our truth. Well, let's talk about the big return. Our truth. Back. Right? Our truth is back, baby. History made as WWE continues to have a record breaking 2023. Does this mean we could also see the return of AJ Lee? Speaking on the Bill Simmons podcast, WWE President Nick Khan gave insight to what the future might look like for both the WWE and UFC brand, with a suggestion of all-star TKO weekends, essentially a mega event, to provide the new company the chance to reduce costs and drive revenue. But yes, what everyone envisions is can you set up an all-star TKO weekend where if SmackDown goes on Friday and the UFC goes on Saturday with the pay-per-view and WWE goes with the premium live event on Sunday, can you do that from the same city? Certainly a lot of cost efficiencies there in terms of production, but a lot of revenue efficiencies in terms of upside, we think there as well. Will this cross promotion lead to longevity in fight sport life? When and if an individual is finished with the UFC, could WWE be a prospect or vice versa? Although two different animals, there are still some similarities. Even if it's the smaller things like movement, cardio, stamina, bigger building blocks after that, but some as we know have been able to create that path, i.e. Brock, Shayna, Ronda, President and COO of both Endeavor and TKO, Mark Shapiro, quote, We're having very encouraging conversations with several players and platforms at the moment on Raw and SmackDown. WWE is a full calendar sports and entertainment platform with significant engagement and attractive demos, and that bodes well for these conversations, and I believe that we'll have results that are in line with market expectations, end quote. Guaranteed value added for a streaming brand as the demand for fresh content only continues. Like and share and subscribe. Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Danny Garcia, and the creators of Dark Side of the Ring. The legacy of WCW is iconic. When it went out of business, it was the end of that era. In 1993, wrestling promoter Eric Bischoff took over what was a struggling WCW World Championship Wrestling brand and transformed it into a powerhouse that influenced culture and even got the best of WWE, ratings-wise, for almost two years. Bischoff implemented many changes and signed megastars such as Hulk Hogan and Macho Man Randy Savage, as well as built his own superstar in Bill Goldberg and launched the blockbuster Monday Night Nitro, creating the memorable Monday Night Wars, a new Vice TV show titled 
Who Killed WCW, investigates what caused one of the biggest sports entertainment franchises to implode so dramatically. It was like a pool of sharks. Idiots everywhere. It's just mind-boggling. I don't believe in the number of coincidences that surround this entire situation. That's always going to be the million-dollar question. Who killed WCW? You want to hear the real story or you want to hear the bull story? Who really killed WCW? What was the final blow that sent the company to a sudden demise? Constant changes in creative leadership, egos clashing on and off screen, the infamous AOL Time Warner merger. This four part series will explore the rise and fall of this former pro wrestling television company juggernaut, starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Bill Goldberg, Eric Bischoff, among others. Vice's new four part miniseries will be a deep dive into a murky and fascinating question that has puzzled wrestling fans for decades. shares his thoughts on WWE Raw moving from USA to Netflix. So far, Cena is supposed to be on the first episode kicking off that 2025 retirement tour. Michael Cole just signed a new long-term contract and will be calling the action over on Netflix. Rumors are Raw on Netflix will not be time constrained and the show's time frame could vary. Reigns gives his thoughts via Bloomberg Power Players on the monumental content deal. Raw is moving to Netflix in January. Can you take us through, like, how big a deal is this for WWE? I think this is the biggest deal of all time, to be honest. Um, but the, the thing that changes the whole landscape for us is that we've been on linear television for decades now, and we've been the leader of that um, episodically. Um, so to take our program and to put it on a streaming network like Netflix, um, it's just unheard of. We, I mean, to, to go all the way back to, through our history to see where we are now and the growth that we've had um, really since 2020, you know, when the world was upside down has just really been amazing. So it's a it's a big opportunity for us to not only showcase our product, but just what we've mastered with live television. A quick news update on the legendary Asuka who is currently healing from a knee injury slash surgery. Rumors are she may return at the Women's 2025 Royal Rumble. Asuka has reportedly signed a long-term, multi-year contract extension. Info sourced, PW Insider, WWE locking down the Empress of Tomorrow to continue being a cornerstone of their main roster women's division. Like and share and subscribe.